another topic that many quantum analyzer users have found difficult to interpret but i have a good news for you today i have come to break down these parameters for you so the next parameter we have here is what we call coenzyme q10 coenzyme q10 is a compound that is needed for the proper functioning of an enzyme so we have either defined that an enzyme is a protein that can act as a catalyst to increase the rate of the biochemical reaction of a substance. Coenzyme Q10 is found in every cell of the body. I want you to take note of that. Coenzyme Q10 is found in every cell of the body. As a matter of fact, it is an antioxidant. What is an antioxidant? Okay, something that prevents oxidation reaction from taking place. If you have seen rust, maybe a metal or an iron rusted, what causes it to rust is oxidation reaction. Say for example now, if you eat apple, if you, if you open apple, you see it all white, leave it out there for some minutes, you see that it begins to turn brown. That is oxidation reaction taking place on the apple. So imagine that such kind of rust is happening in a tissue, in a cell, or in an organ of the body. Okay? It implies tissue damage. It's going to cause tissue damage. It's going to cause disease. It's going to cause problems. Now, I want you to note that the body has four para parathyroid glands. You can see them one, two, three, four has four parathyroid glands that are located just behind the thyroid gland itself. Remember that this is the thyroid gland arranged around the trachea, okay? And this is the parathyroid gland. This one, two, three, four point that you're looking at are uh, the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid gland releases or secretes a hormone that we call the parathyroid hormone. This hormone helps to control the levels of minerals in the body, such as calcium, phosphorus, magnesium. A situation whereby it is on yellow, moderately abnormal high, severely abnormal high, then it is a case of hyperparathyroidism. Okay, I just want to show you an image. Remember the this is the um, thyroid gland, and then this is the backside of the thyroid gland. And look at the parathyroid glands. All right, look at this one. It's bigger than others. This is what we call a benign tumor. Okay, this is a, a tumor. Okay, so this is a condition of hyperparathyroidism, and this can cause our result analysis to be on moderately abnormal high or severely abnormal high. And what happens is that when this tumor becomes bigger than normal, right, it will now cause the PTH to be released higher than normal into the bloodstream. Now, excess PTH travels through the blood into the bones. Now, this almost activates the osteoclast cells within the bones to eat away the bone. Can you see? This is the bone. This is calcium loss that is going on here. Because a more than required calcium was taken away from the bone, so the, the bones become porous. So osteoporosis is happening here because there was too much phosphate within the bloodstream. Alright? And because it was supposed to be excreted through the urine, if it stays back within the bloodstream, the alternate reaction is to uh, get more calcium from the bones and that is what, where the, the bones begin to suffer what we call osteoporosis. The next parameter we have here under the obesity data analysis is what we call brown adipose tissue function. The word um, adipose tissue is another word for fat. They are the fat that surround the internal organs. Okay, so 
So basically, brown adipose tissue in this parameter or in this context is talking about brown fat. Actually, the body has two types of fat, what we call the brown fat and the white or yellow fat. Some people call it yellow fat, some people call it white fat, alright? But um, the common type or the most common type of fat among the two is what we call the white fat. People who are obese, people who are very fat, have more of white fat than brown fat. Brown fat helps the body to burn calories faster. Brown fat helps the body to burn calories faster. The next parameter we have in the QRMA device under the menstrual cycle data analysis is the fibrinogen. It is the hormone that is directly responsible for blood clotting. So when a woman is going through the menstrual cycle and it gets to the stage where you need to shed off the blood, okay, it is the fibrinogen that comes to play when the blood that was supposed to be shed has come to an end. If the fibrinogen level is low, then continuous bleeding, continuous bleeding will come to play. The next parameter we have here is what we call appendicitis coefficient. Alright, if you look at some other uh, models of the QRMA device, you may see them calling it either appendicitis coefficient or appendagitis coefficient. Appendagitis coefficient. Now, let me correct, let me quickly correct a wrong notion that many people have been spreading about this parameter in the industry. Please take note, this appendicitis coefficient is not talking about the inflammation of the appendix. Remember that we are under the gynecology region. The appendix is located somewhere within the digestive system. We are talking about it being located around the colon, I mean the large intestine. That is the region that is usually cut off during uh, a surgery when it is inflamed. The appendicitis coefficient or the appendicitis, or, or the appendicitis coefficient is talking about inflammation of the appendages. Inflammation of the appendage. Appendage is talking about a collection of certain organs in the female reproductive um, unit, which comprises of the fallopian tube, the ovary, and the uterine ligaments or the uterine wall. These are still examples of pelvic inflammatory diseases that could cause infertility and ought to be taken care of so that the woman will not express infertility or discomfort in her normal day-to-day need. Okay, what we have on the screen is an image of the female reproductive system and we are considering or we are rather studying the appendicitis coefficient or what you have in the quantum that calls it appendicitis coefficient but in essence it is talking about the appendages the appendages and this comprises of the fallopian tubes the ovary and the uterine wall the endometrial wall the ligaments the ligaments of the uterine wall now, when you're talking about the word tropic, these are hormones that act on the gonads, telling them to secrete certain hormones. That's why it's called gonadotropin. Alright? And the hormone we are talking about here is the follicle stimulating hormone and the neutralizing hormone. So, during the menstrual cycle of the woman, the GNRH, the gonadotropin releasing hormone, 
tells the ovary to release follicle stimulating hormone within the first 14 days of the menstrual cycle for a woman who has a 28 day cycle. Alright, now within these 14 days, what it does is that there are frozen follicles within the ovary. The follicle stimulating hormone goes to stimulate the follicles to develop into primary follicles. From primary follicles, they mature into secondary follicles. Alright, that is what the gonadotropin does. In general terms, the function of the gonadotropin in the ovary is to regulate the production and maturity of eggs. When we have a result that is lower than normal, from mildly to moderately to severely abnormal low, the person may experience infertility problem because a low result will definitely cause a low or insufficient production of luteinizing hormone and if there is an insufficient production of luteinizing hormone, ovulation is not going to take place and if ovulation doesn't take place, the eggs cannot be fertilized and if the eggs are not fertilized, then the woman cannot get pregnant. Alright, now let's look at uh, recommended lifestyle. So we we'll encourage you to eat more of natural foods, healthy fats, organic dairy and proteins. Remember I've mentioned yam and the implication of um, the advantage or the benefit of eating yam to boost fertility. It also boosts the gonadotropin hormone. Okay, it boosts both the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone. The next parameter we have under the immune system data analysis is what we call the immunoglobulin index. Immunoglobulin index. Okay, the word immunoglobulin, they are molecules or proteins that play a major role in the immune function of the body. Okay, now let me break it down. The word immunoglobulin just replaces the word antibodies. Now, I want you to look at these five classes of immunoglobulin or antibodies. They include the following. IgG, IgM, IgA, IgE, or IgD. The next parameter we have here is what is called colonic absorption coefficient. Do you know that the main function of the large intestine is absorption of water? Absorption of water. Absorption of water. In a situation whereby the speed of movement or the speed of contraction is too fast, then it will not give a chance for the large intestine to carry out its main function, which is absorption of water. So that is why you see people suffer from what we call diarrhea. Their stool is watery. What happens? The large intestine will not carry out its main function, which is absorption of water. It's supposed to take back the water that, that has accompanied all the kind, all the food, all the nutrients that have moved from the stomach to the small intestine to now the large intestine. All right, the, the, the job of this uh, large intestine is to absorb it. So if your stool is watery, it is because the large intestine could not carry out its main function, which is absorption of water. Now can you see the reason why you need to subscribe for this course? The information you can gather from this course goes beyond the operation of the quantum analyzer device. If you are a healthcare consultant or you also use the nonlinear system analyzer device, you will need the widely researched information packaged in this course. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. Subscribe now. Subscribe now. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. Subscribe now. Subscribe now. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. Subscribe now. Subscribe now.